Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to church this Sunday. And happy Father's Day to all of the fathers here. And we just want to celebrate um, that God has created you and that you, for all the sacrifices that you've done to your, um, for your family. And um, why don't we all rise as we read the Word of God. And it's found, I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. And it says, Yet for us, yet yet for us, there is but one God, the Father, cor- from whom all things came, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came. And yes, that is the truth today. That there is only one Father here. There is only one God that we are celebrating today. And may we just open up our hearts to celebrate the Lord Almighty, the King of Kings. Here we go. <laughs>
in all things. So why don't we go all, go around and shake each other's hands. And if there's a father beside you, me, we them happy Father's Day.
life who is so good. And um, we just want to continue with worship.
standing as I read the scripture, the word of God. God has guided the Apostle Paul in Romans 5. And he said this word. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. <coughs> More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we are still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. By God, but God shows his love for us in what? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Father, we thank you for your great word. And even more than the way that you've been spoken to us as our Heavenly Father. We thank you that we can be together this morning to worship you. And we are humbled, our Heavenly Father, when we consider how we have been justified by faith. We have been blessed with your matchless grace. And now we have every reason to rejoice in the hope that one day we will receive glory that we don't deserve as joint heirs with Christ. It is so amazing, our Heavenly Father, how ungodly and helpless we were. That your Son shed his blood for all of us. Not only saving us from your wrath, but also reconciling us to yourself. You chose us. You called us and you redeemed us. You have accepted us in the Beloved, your only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we confess with shame that at times our love for you is weak. Sometimes it's faithless. We are too easily distracted. Too easily discouraged. And too easily disturbed by the trials, the temptations of daily life in this fallen world. Oh, forgive us, Father. We are neither as poor in spirit nor as pure in heart. Forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for our self-love. Remove such sins in our hearts. And may we one day that we will love you perfectly, that we will serve you more faithfully. And may we one day that we will worship you in true singleness of heart. And nothing will compete our love for you. May this day be today, right at this very moment. We give you our hearts in worship. Our Heavenly Father, by your grace, may we found all our happiness and hope in you alone. That our 
hearts and minds fix only on you and nothing else. Our lives as a church family are surrendered to you. Our heard and our hands and all our hearts are committed to your work. And may the power of your spirit increase in us that we become more faithful witnesses for Christ in the places where you will lead us. And God help us to pursue your righteousness more diligently each day. In all that we do, we pray for the world that will leave me in even here in Langley in Canada and all the rest of the world. We pray, God, for the leaders of the nations that they will rule in righteousness that is coming from you. Our thoughts are with the people in the Philippines, particularly our brothers and sisters in the Lord, especially. And Father, we pray for each and every one of them to strengthen them, give them peace, give them the courage to live up for you protect them. And Father, we even ask for some of our inner burden in our hearts. We thank you even, Lord, for all the answer our prayer with regards to Gladys. We thank you, Lord, to put your hand upon her that she will be well. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy even for the family of Sister Lean, that the loss of a brother, God will do you to comfort them. You'll be gracious to them in the next coming days. And may you meet the needs of our people, you are living word. We thank you, God, that you are Heavenly Father, that you are such a prayer away. And may you be continue to be exalted in our midst this morning. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And God's people
more volunteers. Are you that excited? That's <laughs> awesome. That's um, First of all, um, we'd like to, before we send the children to their class, um, we recognize those who have finished their grade 12, the secondary, and uh, thank you parents, thank you church for encouraging them. And now we would like them to, why, why did you just stand? It is Red in here? Red is one of them? Sorry. Uh, Paolo, and there's another one, Jared. Stand up, please. There's to bless you and guide you in the next year ahead of you and one of you will become a doctor the other one will become an engineer <laughs> well god's blessing to you thank you thank you um, thank you parents for guiding them and encouraging them uh red also yeah now children would you like to come forward please uh, before you go to your class we're so thankful to the Lord for each and every one of these children. Look at this. All right. <laughs> uh, always, always consider a great responsibility whenever we see this beautiful young kid, isn't it? <laughs> All right. What are you expecting this morning, Caleb? Your Something. Something. That something will be big. <laughs> Who will be teaching them this morning? Okay. All right. Why don't you pray with me as we dedicate these children and commitment? Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious children that you gave us. And Lord, may you speak to their hearts now as they will go to their class. Thank you for the teachers that they have prepared and that they're committed to minister to them. And uh, we're so thankful, Father, for their lives and how it would be part of their parents' uh, intention to, to guide them and teach them the ways of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. We go now. Celebrant, Sister Michelle, on the 21st. All right. Now, as you notice, on every Sunday, we put in our uh, coming events the family camp. It's a special time where we're all family got together in a special place, not here. So we ask you to take, um, take note of the date, August 25 to 27. If you haven't taken a, 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 day, a day off or a holiday, August 25 to 27, we have to still have enough time, and uh, yeah. Um, family of the week, the Agawin family, I would like you to pray for them the whole week, and uh, remember them in your prayers, the family. <clears throat> this morning, we have Pastor Pahim to share with us the Word of God. I'd like him to come forward now. And, uh, oh, by the way, there's a video we have to present maybe first. Come, come down, sit, sit in the front of you. Hello, my name is Fahim and I live in Vancouver, Canada. I have a wife and a beautiful wife with five kids. It's a blessing from God. I born and grew up in Boston. Life wasn't always easy. I started using drugs when I was seven years old. And I left the family when I was 13 because I did not keep up. It's other consequences, a lot of challenges in my life. Finally, I decided to leave the country, so I left when I was 17, and I started living in Pakistan. Same lifestyle, same problems, anyway. I realized that, you know, I can offer to do some work against some Christian missionaries. Anyway, I was 19 when I met the gentleman, a missionary who was from England, 
and through his love and respect, I met Jesus Christ. Well, it was uh, 2000 when I moved from Winnipeg to Vancouver, and I realized God called me to pastor in the uh, flock. So I get some education from Columbia Bible College, uh, and after that I start serving the Lord in 2001 as a pastor. And it wasn't satisfying my heart because I see a lot of desperate life, a lot of broken life that I need Jesus. So I pray to the Lord, Lord, show me something that I want to do more. And I realized that there are a lot of new immigrants here and also in Turkey. Like, Lord, show me to take my net from one side of the boat to the other side of the boat. And this is how I feel that God want me to serve him in different capacity. And here I am. Now we have a ministry locally and globally. Locally we have a radio ministry, prison ministry, new immigrant support, counseling, preaching, teaching, and cultural support. And here, locally we have always fruits, and praise the Lord, every year we have at least 10 to 12 baptisms back. It wasn't satisfying me, as I said. And the global ministry is the one who really touched my heart more and boosted me up because I go to Turkey once a year for a month, and this month in time that I baptized over like 15, 16, and 100 people every year, and also there is hundreds of people who give their life to the Lord. Of course, when you serve the Lord, there are a lot of challenges, but we have to trust the God in this situation. There is one story I want to tell you. It's really exciting because it was a time that we had a conference in, in Turkey and we have uh, at least 100 people, but 17 of them was, came from Iran and they wanted to go back. Usually in the conferences, we distribute the Bibles and some you know, memory sticks. They have a lot of Bible story in it, worship uh, songs. So these Iranians who come from Iran and they want to go back, they want to get some Bibles with them back so they can give it to others. And to me, it was like, I, feel, I wasn't feeling comfortable because I knew it was dangerous. If they arrested in order, then they're going to face the persecution. So I was feeling not comfortable. But they said they won't take it. They insist for that. And I said, okay. So we start praying for them. And I remember it was a team that prayed for those people who go back to Iran. And then we was waiting for their phone call because we want to know what's happening. All of a sudden, we have a phone call. And there was a beautiful testimony, beautiful work of God happened because in the border, when the time was a security check, everything had been shut down. And that was amazing because a lot of people were coming. So the security system said, put them all through without checking the luggage. And after when they passed, so they gave us call, they said, Lord has put them through and no problem. But again, still, I'm not satisfied but my net is full, and I need the help to pull this out. Pastors, missionaries, brothers, sisters, and leaders, I need your help. I need people help me to pull out these nets full of fishes. I need the partner. I'm inviting you to be part of this ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Living Word. And I just a couple of things I'd like to ask you, two or three. Um, how the, the Lord has brought you to Canada, which you have uh, explained a little bit. How he had uh, guided you. And, and I know from our conversation in the past that uh, you left your home at the age of 13. Yes, I did. He was born in Iran, and um, leaving home and and went somewhere else and associated with with not good people. <laughs> Ended up in the. Uh, I was one of them. You were one. Not of them. good people. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up uh, associated with uh, drug people, mm. right? Mm. And, and uh, you ended up in Pakistan, I, I uh, Yes. Okay. For 10 years, I lived, was living in Pakistan. What happened, actually, I, you see, I born in a family, like, really loving family. 
not the, like it was a middle class, even lower class, I can say that. And we wasn't rich people, and, but my father was a very hard worker. And in and, and that time, I knew they loved me so much, but there was a gap in my heart I could not be filled. And I wasn't satisfied always, my, as I was saying that. I want always see more, to understand more. I want to see what's happening. So that time, uh, you know, my relationship with my family wasn't good because I want more than they can give it to me in another lifestyle, but it just, it was something was missing in my heart. So I started using drugs when I was 11 years old. And, and uh, that was a start giving me some temporary peace. Was it, was it, was it true that you had lived in the streets as well? Yes, I did live in the street. I, I mean, obviously, when you are starting having a life, you know, with not with family, also having, you know, using drugs and going, doing, everything's come. So life was up high and down, like so much uh, different lifestyle, like you don't have any balance in your life because you live by the situation, and situation is always, you know, like the weather of the Vancouver. You never know what's happening <laughs> when it's raining. Life and stuff was really like that. So anyway, when I left country, um, I was, I, as I said, I was uh, 11 years old. We used drugs, but uh, they always fight, big fight with me, with my father, with families. They was thinking I'm a kind of piece of shame in there, you know, because they were insulting for them. I was a young boy using drugs, and I have two younger brothers at that time. Uh, so I was 13 when I, after so many fights and arguments, I left home. I ran away. Right. And to fast forward, you know, there's a long story. Yes. And uh, you mentioned on the video also mm -hmm. that you met this missionary couple. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where was this? It was in Pakistan. Pakistan. Uh, yes. I was 17 when I was in Pakistan and I was uh, also doing the same lifestyle. I was end up in the prison in Pakistan, in the camp jail in Lahore, border of the country, you know, uh, India and Pakistan. And then when I came out, so I was in the part of the criminal lifestyle and doing all this bad of good things. So, um, and then um, I was offered by the actually government of Pakistan, one of the you know the Muslim agencies. They they told me if I can work with them against missionaries. And as a Muslim, you know, background, I, I wasn't good Muslim. I wasn't following you know, God or anything. But uh, but I did have influence of Islam in me. I definitely. So it was like okay, these missionaries come and you know make. Muslims, Christian, so it was kind of, I didn't like that, so uh, I liked the idea to work against them because I told this, uh, you know, I, as a Muslim believer, I was thinking there's always two angels, one in the right hand, one in the left hand, and right hand one's always like the good things, left hand the bad things, so this is the time that the right angel can have something because this poor right angel never had to do anything good, always the left hand angel was writing bad, so I accept that because of the uh, spirit of Islam inside me was, oh yeah, no, against this Christian. Because Christian didn't have, still I think, good reputation in Muslim countries. Like, to be honest, like Muslims have misunderstanding about the Christian. They're like, for example, they think Canada is a Christian country, US is a Christian country. We know there's no country that's a Christian country. So that's the thing. And then, when I started working, you know, going to the churches and visit the churches, I met the missionary who was from OM team. Uh, and then uh, through him, through his love, through his respect, you know, I, I get close to him to report him. And he invited me to his home and I re start recording his voice and, you know, just to get sending. But he asked me to, if I want to kind of stay with him and he has a ministry called Basis Community of Christ. And then when I start living in that place, I accept the offer because it was a good place to spy. <laughs> because a lot of missionaries used to go there, you know, for changing the visa, and it wasn't in Islamabad. So, uh, but since I started living there, things are starting to change in my heart. Like I was, I, I couldn't feel comfortable. Even when I was smoking or drinking, when I was in that home, when I start go inside the house, it's just all gone. And there's a big fight inside my heart, which I know it was a Holy Spirit. Who, you know, just touched my heart. So, what you're I, saying is, um, from being a spy against the Christians, that I become a lover of Christ. And I, so, the verse said that if somebody slap you, bring you on a chick. And it wasn't make sense to me before I become Christian. But now I know because of the other chick. I didn't slap other chick. I kissed such other chick on the side of the chick, and then I become part of that family. So from being a criminal 
to a pastor. <laughs> now, let's uh, hear more from you from God's Word. Thank, sure, you. Thank sure. you for coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. Minister to us. Thank you. Now, I'm doing the interview. <coughs> you interviewed me two, three weeks ago. Yes. It's the other way around. Radio ministry, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, that's well, right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is how uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up because today we know is a Father's Day. And I appreciate that. Thank you for inviting me in such an important day because I believe Father has a very important role in people's life, in their children's life. Even as a father, I mean, when we look at it, because I am father myself and I have five kids, uh, I think it's a, it's a quite a challenge, but also quite excitement in the being father and have a relationship with the families. But there is a big misunderstanding for many people, unfortunately for some even Christians, that we know what Jesus said about the Father. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 9, Jesus said, You should not tell anyone Father in this earth, because only one Father in heaven, even Jesus himself, we all, as a Christian, we are read the Bible a lot, and of course, this is our daily life, daily bread. We go to the church, we hear a lot of messages, a lot of good stuff, and uh, many different perspectives, many different denominations, they look at this relationship with Jesus, and how they approach that. Some people are so much after the Holy Spirit, and start getting the gifts, and uh, doing so much stuff that Lord using them. Some people are so much after Jesus, His teaching, and learning, and doing all this, you know, the good things. This is all good. But I think as a Christian, the real Christianity, that's what I understand. This is my opinion. So I'm not just telling you, oh, you have to believe me. But this is my opinion. And of course, I believe everyone has a right to have opinion as long as it can match the culture of the Bible. Right? So we don't want to say something out of that. So when I see that, I look at the Jesus as my master, as my teacher, as somebody who I can learn the life from him. Learn the being the person, be the real person, and get the salvation, they get the biggest gift ever. He himself, time to time, mentioned about the Father. So, one of the questions I want to ask you that you have to answer yourself, not me, even if you go to right to the bed, before you sleep, just think about that question. And think about the today, Father's Day, because this message is not just for fathers and not for those who have fathers or those who don't have fathers for every person because we all have one father in heaven so my question is what is your relationship with your father we have seen many christians around the world they're all good people but there is a lot of people Characters, behaviors, sometimes we feel that we are not happy with the somebody's behaviors as a Christian. We are not, as you know, we are ambassador of Christ anywhere we go. So we have responsibilities. But unfortunately, not many of us are really good ambassadors. That is why medalists in a lot of Muslim countries or others, that they are confused about Christianity. Who are the Christians? Hollywood presenting Christianity? The culture of Canada or US presenting Christianity? There's so many misunderstanding and confusion. Unfortunately, even for some Christians, it's confusion too. So, what is your relationship with Father? It's come through that how what Jesus said to us as a master, as a teacher. When Disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. How Jesus started. What he said in Matthew 6. He said, Our Father in heaven. He bring the name of the Father. He mentioned that. So, even over, over relationship with the each other's. When Jesus teaches about the forgiveness, what he said 
again in the Matthew, said, if you forgive others, the Father will forgive your sin. I have seen many Christians, they pray, they good pray, they sometimes they confuse, pray to Jesus, pray to the Holy Spirit, pray to the Father. Sometimes I see people say Jesus as their Father. The reason I'm saying all these things because I like to challenge us and encourage us in the same way that we better look at our relationship with the Father. <coughs> of course, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have one God in three different personalities. So, this is something that we know, and I don't want to go to teaching of the Trinity, but there is something always we have as a Christian, we all know that. But not being clear in our relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, sometimes we have seen that it end up that become confusion. We have Mormons, we have Jehovah Witnesses, we have Jesus only. Because one is small misunderstanding and the gap of the Father relationship in our heart can take us away from the reality. We need to have a relationship with our Father. There's something, when I was sharing my testimony and I said also by Pastor Gilbert when I asked me about, I said I wasn't satisfied because inside my heart there was a gap. There was a gap that nothing can fill it. I, I did have a father. The father who really loves me so much. But his relationship with me was kind of limited. He couldn't be hero always for me. I know some fathers are good because they can be hero when your kids are like growing up, as a, especially if you have a son, or if you son in with your relationship with your uh, early father, uh, you know, usually until grade five, six, seven, once your kids become teenager, then you are not anymore hero of your child. Even sometimes they think you don't understand it. You are too old. You don't get it, Baba. You don't get it, Daddy. Right? We have all these challenges. So it's very hard to be your the hero of your son, even when he grow up and he get married and he have a son himself or daughter. Why is it like that? Because obviously Jesus said that. We have only one Father. We do have a role as a father, responsibility as a father to our children, but we cannot do it all. So our responsibility, not be really acting 100 person father to our kids, but connect our child to the real father in heaven. This is every father's responsibilities. Don't try to play the all the roles. And especially I have seen that many people, uh, unfortunately, in the, such a developed culture, we realize now many people grow up without father for any reason. Sometimes they divorce, sometimes the father passed away, sometimes, and the kids are grow up, they think there is such a gap, a missing father in their life. And as a mother, as a somebody who is responsible for that child, you can connect your child to the Father in heaven to fill up that gap. Because there is a Father in heaven who wants to be a big part in our heart. Even Jesus, we are, we are really, you know, with a lot of love and passion, we follow Jesus. Jesus, in every prayer, in everything we talk about Jesus. This is awesome. This is good. But Jesus himself, he wants to connect us to the Father. That's why he was on the cross. Because we lose our relationship with the Father because of sin. And then when we lose this relationship, what happened? We lose our relationship with Father, we lose our relationship with ourselves. And we lose our relationship with each other. The broken, broken, broken relationship. But Father loved us so much that He gave His only Son that who believe him should have a salvation and eternal life. So 
The point is that what is our relationship with the Father? Jesus himself, he sacrificed, he gave his life so you and I can have relationship with the Father. The reason I'm saying that, if we allow the Father in heaven, live in our heart and fill that space, the gap that from the beginning of the broken relationship with the Father in the Garden of Eden, when the, we are separate, if we allow that fill, that spot be filled, then we feel love of God. Because we get salvation, we born again, we confess Jesus as our Lord, we get baptized. There's no doubt about the, you know, about, uh, about our salvation. So of course, when the Bible said that in Romans, you know. You, anyone who accepts Jesus with the mouth and with their heart and confess with their mouth, they have a salvation. But having salvation is the beginning of the journey to live eternally with the Father. But to live eternally and go through this journey and be in person who, as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, we need to have close relationship and we need to have a healing in our heart which the parts have been wounded and only father can feel that spot father who is in heaven so today is a father's day this is an amazing day this is a wonderful and i i love that because uh, i did i remember when i was very young and uh, very very i my father was always pick on me because I was the first son and, and uh, you know, uh, I love him so much, even though we always fight to each other because I didn't want to accept it. But, but the love inside my heart for my father was amazing because in, in, in our culture, usually when somebody talks and if you want to make sure if he's lying or not, then you ask him, swear to your father that you are honest. You know, swear to your father, you know, say, in my father's life, I swear that he is. And I remember that was the only time people can get the truth out of my mouth if they make me swear my father's life. Because <laughs> I love him so much. I could not see that my father, you know, face some problems and stuff. But, but still, it was like having, you know, fight relationship. But he has a special part in my life. I still have. He still have. I never lose that. But, but the thing is, when I met Jesus, and then through Him, when I feel the God Father, I invite the relationship, and healing, and the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and surrender all to Him, then I feel different. I feel healing. The healing that allow as a Christian love our enemies. When we listen to Jesus, his teaching, the teaching of Jesus is amazing, but impossible without having relationship with the Father. That is why many Christians fail. Sometimes we are so excited. We run after something that we miss different things. You know, when we say God is love in John, in the letter John, letter John, that when we say God is love, what does that mean? The love doesn't come from Jesus. The love doesn't come from Holy Spirit. The love doesn't come from Father. The love comes of the relationship. That is why God is love. The relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this love, if we feel the love of Father in our heart, and if we experience love of Father in our heart, which is the healing in our hearts that give us experience, then we able to love our families, to love our friends, and even love our enemies. So today, I want to encourage you 
just read, I mean, all the verses, all the gospel talk about the father. I know even Bible introduced Abraham, you know, as a father Abraham of the nations, and, and there's no doubt, and, and if we go through that, we can see Noah was also one of the father of the nation too, because, you know, through him also that all nations come. But, but then come to Jesus. Jesus help us to understand the reality, the truth that said, don't call anyone father because you have only one father in heaven. So, I want to encourage you to have a balance in your relationship. When you pray, ask Holy Spirit that help you to communicate with Father. That is the Jesus purpose, to bind us together. When we go to heaven, Jesus is our brother. He's a God, he's a holy God. No doubt about that. He loves him so much and he loves us so much that he is life. But sometimes we're missing the Father. So my point is that we have to have a balance, we have to have an understanding. He allowed the healing in our heart so we have a relationship. With and, and Jesus presenting the love of Father to us. So of course, having a relationship with the Jesus and Holy Spirit that can help us to understand the Father. Therefore, that's why I give my life surrendered and that's now I do what I do. Just one short testimony I tell you, but then I want to just uh, open the things if people want to ask a question, if you don't mind. I want to literally, maybe today you have a little different style of the sermon. But, uh, I remember my daughter was become a teenager and as a Persian Muslim background uh, you know, uh, person, it's very hard to see your daughter teenager in the, such a culture, you know, like, and she started acting the way that it was hurt my heart. I was confused. I was trying to control her. I was trying to stop her. I was trying to do as much as I can with being also careful about the country and system and rules and I don't want to be hooked up with, you know, some, which is I did with the consular, with the police department, all these things because I was worried about my daughter. So much love in my heart for my daughter. I don't want to see she get lost in this, such a culture that she lose everything in the future. It was hard. I was grieving. I was praying. I was missing one thing that after all been knowing and preaching to people and knowing myself that father talked to me. He said, Fahim, you are not only the father. I am the father. Let me look after her. You do your part. Don't do my part. Let me do my own part. You know what? It was like a peace just come and do it in my heart. The challenge wasn't finished. And I feel yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. That is true. Believe me, I start learning and praying, so guide me every step, God. <laughs> and then slowly I see my daughter has been start changing. Start changing. And she's still changing, but things are so much different. Now I'm worried about my son because he's become a teenager. <laughs> and I have five kids, I have to be ready for another those also. <laughs> so what I mean like, but, but now one thing I want to say that, I am not just a father of five kids. In one way, I believe I'm a father of maybe, I don't know, thousands of people because I baptize. I don't have a number of how many people I baptize. How many people come to the Lord to know when ministry? It's been 27 years I'm serving the Lord. 27 years. With all my heart, with all my soul. And every time I'm learning something. But I enjoy it. Believe me or not. I love the same way I love the person who I baptized him or baptized her. As I, my daughter, my son. Yes, I do have different responsibility before him. But my love for them is the same. We are family of God. When you know the heart of the Father, 
when you know heart of the God Father in heaven, then believe me, the relationship will look different. We all feel we are really brothers and sisters. It's not just pretending, not just be thinking, but we believe it truly to our heart. That's how relationship is different. And when relationship is as indifferent, then we can be good ambassador to outside the community. Then people, anyone look at us, they amazed at who are these people looking different colors, looking different language, but they love each other so much. And this is what is, I think, my call that I'm doing to Turkey. I, we have Afghans, actually I speak Urdu, Farsi, Dari, and of course English is my fourth language, I think, so that's why I have slightly broken things, but, uh, and, 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 and Lord is using me, and I, I love to see that when people come, the best time in my life when I see somebody confess their sin and repent and accept Jesus. This is the best time in my life, actually after my, my wife. I married so but best first gift it was when I accept Jesus, my salvation. The second gift that the best one is my wife in my life. And then after that the gift of the gift. My kids and my spiritual kids and then you know it's amazing that how even though many times a lot of problems, a lot of you no know, there is always a storm in your life. Always. There's always problems, especially if you want to live as a Christian. But if you have a father with you, you don't scare. Because father is with you and he can protect you. If you fall, it doesn't mean you finish. Sometimes God, father, allow us to fall because he wants to make us more stronger. Because one want to make us more stronger because he wants to use us for other part of the families. There are a lot of brothers and sisters we have that we have responsibility to win their souls to the kingdom, my brothers and sisters. We are responsible. Until we live in this earth, each one of us are responsible for others who lost, lost, they are not in part of the kingdom yet. And this is my job to challenge and invite you to be partner, to do something. That And there is an opportunity. I don't know what is your church mission. I don't know what you guys doing. I, I appreciate that. I love that. But I appreciate this opportunity for me to allow me to present this. So there is an opportunity for partnership that you can be part of that. You can even travel with me to Turkey if anyone feels. There is an opportunity, of course. You know, we can come and we can I usually go one month, stay in Turkey. I wish I can go three times a year, but I cannot because of, you know, financial situation, all this stuff, all time table. But, Every time I go, you meet hundreds of desperate people who are thirsty for the kingdom. And always there are people who give their life to the Lord. And you can come, you can be part of the children programs, you can part of, if you are a woman, it's kind of part of women's program. There's always a lot of opportunities. The work is a lot great. But the work is very nice. Bless you. Let's pray together. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for today, and Father, I just want to say Happy Father's Day to you. With all our heart, we all say Happy Father's Day to you because we love you so much. Thank you for your uh, love and grace. Thank you for being the God that will really honest to us and, and show us all the truth, bad and good, everything that we have to learn and to understand. And Father, I pray that protect our relationship with you and protect our relationship with each other, Father. If we are still have a gap and we are still not feeling your love perfectly so we can love, we cannot love our enemies or somebody who don't love us, Father, I pray that allow us to experience your love, allow us to understand your love, that through your love that we have a salvation and grace. So, Father, I just want to thank you. I pray for this church, Father. I want to pray for our brother, our pastor of this church. I pray for our leaderships here, Father. I pray for uh, all the, uh, Father, these youth people, Father. I pray for a uh, worship team, Father. I pray for every congregation, everyone who come here. Maybe some of them even not member yet, but I pray for each heart and soul here, Father. 
Let your love, let your grace, let your spirit, let your kingdom grow in their life, Father. And use this church, Father, to bring lives to your kingdom, Father. Protect them, Father. Protect their relationship. Protect their mind and their hearts, Father. I pray that, Father, bring more trust in this church to your kingdom and to your faithfulness, Father. And I want to thank you, and I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I mean, thank you and bless you. I think it doesn't matter. So, do you want me to see it or do you want to ask any question or anything? I don't know if this how do you get. Well, we're going to do a, an offering and we do the offering. The youth will be presenting something or the children. Um, I just like to, well, let's call the ashes to come now and we're going to collect the offering. And, Let's pray first. Father, we thank you. Give us this opportunity to give back what belongs to you. And we were challenged and, and we are thankful for what you're doing around the world and, and through even our pastor for him. Thank you for him and his wife Akram. Lord, and the whole family, we commit them to you. So now, Lord, we, we worship you through the giving of your tithes and the offering in Jesus' name. May I call on the worship team?
Thank you, ladies. Um, so at this time, we have a few kids who would like to give tribute to their fathers. Who would like to come up? So we, we have Phoebe, Daniela, and Andrea. Dear Dad, on Father's Day and every day, I give thanks to God for you. I am so thankful you are so nice and kind. I want to tell you I love you so, so much because you are loving. And today I hope you'll celebrate. I love you. Love, Daniela. Dear Daddy, on Father's Day and every day, I give thanks to God for you. I am so thankful. You are so awesome and loving. I want to tell you I love you so much because you are so care, because you care for me. And today, I hope you'll have fun. I love you. Love, baby. Dear Dad, on Father's Day and everything, I give thanks to God for you. I am so thankful that you are funny and loving. I want to tell you that you are the best dad. And today I hope you have a good day. Love you. Thank you. That was the sweetest message to their dad. And we also have a few more from our junior um, class who would like to share. So come on up. sacrificing hours of your time to earn money for a family that keeps us sheltered. You are a very important person in my life, and even though I may be difficult sometimes and give you a hard time, it doesn't stop you from becoming a great dad. Thank you for being a role model in my life. I love you. Aww. Dear Dad, I love my dad because he always tries to give, give his time to spend time with us and my brother. He cares about us and loves us with all his heart. I am really thankful that God gave me a father like you. I love you and happy Father's Day. Thank you, Dad, for everything you gave to me. I love you because you always find time to play with me, and you always help me for my homework, and you cook the best food. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you always love us no matter what, and thank you for everything. Thank you, kids. Um, so we'd like to open up the floor to anyone who would like to give a shout out to their fathers and give appreciation. So who would want to share something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> My dad's the best, and he loves me better. And he has a song I prefer for my dad. My dad loves music, and my dad loves me. I love my dad like always watching back basketball with my dad. I love Golden State Warriors, they're one already. And I love my dad. I want to sing from, from my dad. Yeah. Yeah. my dad, you're my favorite dad. Let's grow dad. You're the best father ever. You're the best father ever. Everybody see it for my dad. I love you. I love you more. Forever more. I love my best father of God. You're my father. You're my father. I always love me.
Kids or adults? All right, so I will give the mic now to Grace Lynn, and she will share a little something for the fathers. Okay, so on Mother's Day, we usually hear about the Proverbs 31 woman, a, massive, a passage that outlines the model godly um, woman. So in honor of Father's Day, a man named J.A. Metters, who was the lead pastor of Redeemer Church in Texas, has written a really well-thought article about the Proverbs 31 man. So Metters talks about three main attributes, the three marks of a Proverbs 31 man. So I'm just going to summarize it and condense it for you guys. So number one, a Proverbs 31 man treasures his wife. Proverbs 31.10 says, an excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. And in Proverbs 31.29, he declares, you surpass them all. A wise husband sees his wife as God sees her, as the one who is absolutely amazing, precious, and surpasses all other women. Now, how many of you husbands can say that about their wife? Men and women have different ways of expressing themselves, and there's a reason why it is said that communication is key. So therefore, husbands who want to live for the glory of Christ must ask himself some critical questions of himself. Is my wife precious to me? Does she know how much I adore her? After God himself, would she believe how dear she is to me because of how I love her? And lastly, is it obvious? Second attribute, uh, Proverbs 31 man creates a culture of flourishing. Proverbs 31.11 says, The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. This Proverbs 31 woman is described as a fruitful, productive, and active woman. She's buying fields, making goods to sell at the market, tending to everyone at the house. This is because her husband isn't a dictator, someone who trusts in her, is not suspicious of her, and is not cynical towards her ideas. The wise husband supports and encourages his wife. And on that note, lastly, a Proverbs 31 man is an encourager. Proverbs 31, 28 to 29 says, Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. A mother is charged with creating an amazing home, a safe environment, a place of encouragement, a culture of love for her family. Her children learn from her teachings and encourage her. And what does the husband do? He joins in the honoring of his precious bride, saying, there are lots of great women in the world, but you are the best, and what a woman you are. It's real, sincere, and godly. The Proverbs 31 man seeks to encourage his wife and works to outdo her in showing honor, as it is said in Romans 12.10. The wise husband pours out encouragement and thanksgiving onto his praiseworthy wife. However, unfortunately, most husbands, if not most believers, are prone to under-encouraging others. So when was the last time you moved forward in an unprompted, pure act of love to encourage your wife? Ephesians 5.29 challenges the wise husband to seek to affirm, thank, and honor his precious wife. He, like Christ, nourishes and cherishes his bride. The Proverbs 31 man is more than just a neat way to go about being a proper husband. It is the way of Christ. Jesus is the Proverbs 31 man in the flesh. So fathers, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And in turn, you and your homes and will never be the same. So we would like to acknowledge all the fathers today, especially my own dad, who I believe exemplifies all three of the marks of the Proverbs 31 man. He's a man who's entirely devoted to his family and to the church and works hard to provide for all of us and encourage us. So now I'd like to invite all the fathers, or fathers-to-be, up to the stage as we would like to give them a gift, a token of our gratitude. And as well, this full article I kind of just summarized is in that gift, so I would encourage you all, with your wives and your family, to read it over. So, yeah. So you guys can come up now. <laughs> and come forward. Uh, the stress and hope fit up here. Okay. Uh, 
You can put coffee in that mug. So, here, the things you guys, well, I don't know how we're supposed to do this. Fathers, grandfathers, <laughs> and if anyone wants to do picture Kodakan right now, go ahead and do it. Guys, go to the side first. The side GP, go down. And the men, you'll have to condense. Go closer to each other. So some of you can guys can kneel up towards the front. The shorter ones come up to the front. No. Okay. Now you can give it to your fathers, those that gift, and then we'll do the picture. Everyone have a mug? Let's play. Okay. Guys, raise your mugs. Raise your mugs for the picture. Make sure you don't cover anyone's face. There you go. All right. Everyone look just at the clock because there's already a lot of pictures. At the clock, look at the clock. So it's a general, like, looking for straight. All right, three, two, one, take picture, picture. Smile. <laughs> All the mothers gonna take pictures. Ready? Anyone, anyone still taking pictures? All right. One more, one more. Smile. Great smile. <laughs> okay, last few. Okay. Well, before you go, well, the mother, go back to your seat, please. <laughs> uh, before we pray, uh, it's a challenge from the Word of God, the Scripture, that um, God desired for each and every one of us as father to be the leaders of the home, um, to take the kids there. But Paul, in his prayer, May this be for us, Father. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power and grace and spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, the surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen? Amen. So that's a great prayer for all of us, Father. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for a special day like this. Thank you, Lord, for giving us fathers. But most of all, you as our Heavenly Father, who loves us, who have given everything for us, and especially our salvation, the redemption that we have received from you. That shows how, you must, how much you love us. And thank you, God, for our time together. Thank you for the message to our hearts, for reminding us that we have you as our Heavenly Father. And at times, though, even the earthly father fails, but we have you there for us. Thank you, God, that uh, we can celebrate today. And we even commit to you our time together. Thank you for the food that we're going to share. 
We pray, Lord, that uh, we will we will cherish what we have heard. We will continue, Lord, to become fathers that you want us to be. In the mighty name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.